You know, the one thing with doing these video reports, it always tells me when it's time to get the Just for Men app to re-dye the beard. Anyway, today's Saturday. I've got a number of complimentary plays coming your way here in college football. Hit three out of four with the college comps last Saturday. But more importantly, last Saturday, hit another rare raise the bar 30-dime release in college football. Only the 17th in my career with Miami of Florida. An 11-point favorite crushing Florida State, 52-10. to 10. Coming into today's card, I've won 13 of my last 19 plays. And guys, you know what I've always believed, that no matter what, when you're hot, you never step away from the table. I'm on a roll, and I found another one of those games that's whispering in my ear, bet me, bet me, bet me, and I'm going to do it again today. Another raise the bar, 30-dime release. The 18th of my career, just as strong as Miami of Florida yesterday. It's on the SMU Memphis game. It kicks off at 3.30 Eastern time. And just like Miami of Florida, you are going to get it as the half price play of the day simply by using coupon code HALF, H-A-L-F, as I continue to prove to you that you don't have to spend big money to make big money. But the caveat just as I mentioned last Saturday, is this. There are no guarantees in gambling, as I've been telling you since the days that I used to have my nationwide sports talk show. It may win, it may lose. And either way, I will be here tomorrow putting my four, a five and one NFL record on the line. The sun will rise in the east and set tomorrow in the west. That is the only guarantee that I will provide to you. If you've been with me this football season, well, it's been a very profitable football season. That is the bottom line, as I've won 7 out of 10 selections already. And I've made you a fortune along the way, hitting 13 of my last 19 picks in all sports combined. And we just won that massive 30-dimer last Sunday as well. And what is a 30-dime play? Just to reiterate, well, listen, I rate my plays on a very narrow scale, 5, 10, and 15 dimes. I don't want to have the, I've never been one of these guys actually in the industry who, as you know, is one million zillion star play. And then the next week he has his one trillion zillion star play. That's just ridiculous. Very narrow scale. So you know exactly how much I like the play. And then it comes down to bankroll allocation and money management. How much you can afford to put on a game. Well, what this means, a 39 play, is that it's the top. There's nothing bigger. I've never had a bigger play. Now, that doesn't mean, however, that you go out and mortgage the house. You don't take money from the kids' uh, college tuition fund. You don't rob from your 401k. If you've been playing with me, you have a surplus. If you've been winning, you have a little extra to put down on the game. And I'm telling you, it's a game that I absolutely love. When the lines were announced last Sunday, this is the one game that I focused on. I had another good week, and I'm unloading on it. And if you've been with me, you have extra. You should as well. But again, there are no guarantees in gambling. So with that being said, let's get to your complimentary plays today. I'll run these in reverse chronological order. You know, there's so many teams, when I was handicapping today's card, that are in obvious revenge situations. One of them happens to be Central Florida. Um, this is a team that last year went to Tulsa, had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, and ended up losing the game 37-34. to 34. But it is a team that Tulsa has had Central Florida's number, uh, winning and covering uh, six of the last seven meetings going way back to 2008. Actually, seven of the last eight meetings they've won, and they've covered six of those meetings. But the bottom line is this. Central Florida has played extremely well so far, beating up Georgia Tech, beating up East Carolina, although the East Carolina game last week was a very interesting game. You know, you look at the final score, 51-28. to 28. Uh, It was a game in which um, Central Florida had 632 yards. Uh, the defense forced four turnovers, but it could have been such a bigger blowout. But Central Florida, 19 turnovers in that game, eight false starts among them, uh, cost them 139 yards in that contest. But they're at home. They were a 21-point favorite. Of course, Tulsa's played just one game. It was that 16-7 loss at Oklahoma State back on September 19th. And Tulsa had a 
returning defense that featured a lot of starters coming back. Um, played exceptionally well defensively in that game. But in retrospect, seeing how Oklahoma State then played in its following game, struggling to beat West Virginia at home 27-13, was it the fact that the Cowboys struggled offensively or did Tulsa play so well defensively? This is a high-powered Central Florida team. The one caveat, and I use Central Florida as a free play, if you remember, when they beat up Georgia Tech um, 49-21 on the road in their season opener a couple weeks back, is that they score so fast and so frequently. Their time of possession last year was only about 28 minutes. Their defense is exposed because they're on the field so often. It is a big number. However, I do feel Central Florida is the way to go here. Dylan Gabriels, 856 yards, eight touchdowns already this season. Only been sacked two times last year, however. One of his worst games of the season came against Tulsa. He was sacked six times, two interceptions, redemption for Gabriel, revenge for Central Florida, and I like the Golden Knights in this contest. Uh, on a little bit on the earlier card, um, you know, I was looking at uh, Tennessee minus the 12 and a half points at home against Missouri. Now, Tennessee, I used them last week at South Carolina. They got the job done. Winning in Columbia is something which they hadn't done but once in their previous eight tries. They won that game 31-27. Did they play well? Not necessarily. One for 12 on third downs, 0 for 1 on fourth down tries. Um, their running game was okay. Behind a big veteran offensive line, they averaged four yards a carry. They should have done better, but now they're back at home. There's going to be about 25,000 fans in Knoxville for this game. Um, taking on a Missouri team that lost 38-19 to at Alabama, but do not be deceived by that final score. It was not nearly as close as you would come to believe in Tuscaloosa because they were down... Uh, 28 to 3 at halftime, 35 to 3 early in the third quarter before uh, Nick Saban caught off the dogs in that one. I think this Missouri team, new coach, new offensive coordinator, uh, new quarterback is going to struggle here today. I think that uh, the same way they couldn't stop Alabama's aerial game or Alabama's running game, I think that uh, the Tennessee quarterback who threw for 415 yards the last time they met in Columbia, Missouri, will have another big game today. And I think that the Tennessee ground game will get cranking today against a Missouri defense, run defense that is suspect at best. Uh, Missouri has failed to cover seven of its last eight. And as a double digit dog, they've been an awful play too. One and six of their last seven. So I have no qualms with laying the 12 and a half points with Tennessee in this contest. In the swamp in Gainesville today, Florida is a 16 and a half point favorite against uh, South Carolina. Will Munchamp, of course, going back, a uh, one time Florida coach, um, known for his uh, being a very strong defensive coordinator, never really that successful as a head coach, however. Of course, South Carolina opened with that loss to uh, um, Tennessee at home last week. Florida, meanwhile, 51 35 at Old Miss. Kyle Trask, 30 for 42 in that game, 416 yards, six touchdowns. Did the Florida defense give up a lot of yards to Old Miss? Oh, yes, they did. I mean, Ole Miss, Lane Kiffin just ran up and down the field against Florida. I wasn't surprised by that, um, you know, because that's what Lane Kiffin's teams do. They put a lot of points on the board. They get up a lot of yards, too. Um, listen, but I don't think Florida today is going to give up 29 first downs and 613 yards at home to South Carolina, even though South Carolina has a new offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo, the former Colorado State coach, who then has his former quarterback, uh, who was a grad transfer, Colin Hill, who in his debut for the Gamecocks threw for 290 yards against Tennessee. I think Florida rebounds defensively here today, and I don't think anything is going to stop this Florida offense. So again, I'm going to lay the big wood with another home favorite in the SEC with Florida, and I like them in this spot too. So your three picks are going to be Central Florida, um, Florida, and Tennessee. And if I had to rank those selections, I would go with, again, um, Florida and Central Florida at the top tier, 
and then Tennessee in the second tier. That'll do it, guys, and I wish you well, and uh, we will do this again on Sunday with your NFL selections. Good luck, everybody.